Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, it's time for steam. But not steam locomotives just yet, because first I want to talk about steam engines and how they related to mining and laid much of the groundwork for the railways as we would come to understand them. As I talked about in the last episode, wagonways and tramways were a going concern and mine owners were mostly worried about getting on with their mining. Moving the mine stuff such as coal, copper, slate, or even just plain stone to somewhere that someone would pay for it. That's what made them happy. Mm -hmm. Would it not be better to move even more of whatever was wanted to where people would want to pay for it? Well, of course, and that's where railways come in, but we'll get to that a bit later. Now, mining had a number of challenges besides transportation. As one digs into the ground, besides finding the minerals you want, you often find water. Quite a lot of water that you do not want. This water has to be pumped out of the mine so you can get back to getting the stuff that you do want. Moving water out of a mine has been a part of mining as far back as when someone first dug a hole in the ground with their bare hands. Of course, sometimes that was the point, as one of the first things many humans dug for was water. But let's get back to getting rid of the water. Now, mine operators did not want the water. They wanted the coal, the copper, the tin, or whatever else, not the water. There were many ways of getting rid of the water, and this was often a big operation at almost any mine. As far back as the early 17th century, a number of patents were granted for different steam-powered water pumps. In 1606, Geronimo de Ayans y Beaumont's pump was used to drain mines around Guadalcanal, Spain. This type of steam pump had no moving parts. What was done was that a container was filled with steam, then sprayed with cold water, making the steam within the container condense. This caused a vacuum to form, which was then to use to suck the water from the mine. In 1662, Edward Somerset published a book with many ideas for using steam to pump water, including multi-stage pumps. Thomas Savory's pump, called Miner's Friend, designed in 1698, was based on Somerset's work, although Savory did make some useful additions. None of these steam pumps had any moving parts other than steam and water. In 1690, French physicist and inventor Denis Papin published a paper entitled A New Method for Cheaply Obtaining Considerable Forces. Papin was one of the first to talk of using a piston to do the work. The point of this history, which shows how different inventors worked based on previous designs, is to make it clear that while the purpose of these inventions was to create a vacuum, it is clear that the inventors were not working in a vacuum. Now let's talk of Thomas Newcomen's atmospheric engine. This is one of the classics of the early era of steam. While this is often called a steam engine, in fact the steam does not do the real work, the atmosphere does. This engine uses a bit of steam injected into a cylinder and then cold water is sprayed in, causing the steam to condense, which creates a drop in pressure on one side of the piston, after which air pressure forces the piston down. The piston is hooked to a beam that is then used to work a pump, which pumps the water out of the mine. While this works, it's not very efficient and it uses a lot of steam for relatively little work. Still, these engines could pump a great deal more water than could be pumped by people or draft animals. To make this clear, the power of the engine is atmospheric pressure, so it is known as an atmospheric engine. Later, James Watt rebuilt a Newcomen engine to use a separate condenser so as to not have to cool the cylinder the way a Newcomen engine did. Watt's improved engines were far more efficient. They were so much better, but not only in mines. Watt added to his engines a mechanism to allow for rotary motion. This innovation was just what was needed for its use in manufacturing and factories, and this was a key early development in the Industrial Revolution. 
I want to make it clear that these improved Newcomen type engines designed by Watt were still atmospheric engines using atmospheric pressure to provide the power. These engines were massive constructions and hardly something to put on a tramway. But for now, remember that Watt has the hold on the separate steam condenser patent for the improved Newcomen engine, and this will have a play in our story later. I'll wait before I get yelled at. Sometimes this kind of engine was used to pull on a rope to haul wagons on a tramway. So yes, these engines were used to pull a train, but this is not really what we think of as railway engines. These were the engines of mining. Next time, we'll get to the steam engines of railways. And as always, I'll see you on the train.